Hey guys, Artistic or Autistic here, ready to discuss something that, surprise, surprise, also came from 2005. Seriously, nothing of consequence happened any other year, apparently. Well, shut up, I like these subjects. Jack Thompson. Where do I even begin? Um, he was a lawyer back when this whole incident took place uh, with the Florida Bar. He uh, regularly went on about... Okay, look, I could go on for three episodes at length about this guy, but suffice to say, he was probably best known for chasing after video game developers, um, calling video games murder simulators, and leaping on school shootings like a scavenger on some table scraps. Um, he, in many ways, became the symbol of anti-gaming, and naturally this made him unpopular with, well, us gamers. Now, I'm not going to go after the man's ideology or his claims, because that kind of discussion is really heavy, and would be so long that it would take another full episode if not five full episodes. Uh, but his tactics and decided lack of scruples, a lack, by the way, that got him disbarred, um, gives us pretty ample reason to dislike him. Now, this particular incident started when Thompson uh, wrote a letter to the president of the Entertainment Software Association. Uh, Thompson announced that he would donate $10,000 to a charity designated by the CEO of Take-Two if any game developer would make a game in which the main character was a bereaved father whose son was killed by a boy who played violent video games. The main character, of course, going on a murder spree, slaughtering various people in the game industry. The murdering spree, of course, would have taken place at E3. This challenge was, of course, announced on the internet. So, of course, indie game developers started immediately working on it, eventually resulting in I'm OK, a murder simulator. So yeah, the, the whole incident probably left a bad taste in well, pretty much everyone's mouth. But hey, at least this whole ridiculous proposition would have something good come out of it. A lucky charity was going to get a sizable donation, and with it, a try to make the world a slightly better place, right? <laughs> Heck no! Once the games were actually out, uh, Thompson immediately pulled back his promise, um, insisting that this entire request was only made in satire. Look, I'm sorry, but that's just bullshit outright requesting something without, for the record, stating that it's a jest before the game was made? Indeed, promising a charitable donation of a specific amount? That isn't satire. It's no joke. There is no implication, no suggestion, that he meant anything but what he says, at least not before the game came out. There is a word for what he did, however. Lying. Now, either he didn't think anybody would actually do this, which is just stupid, considering this is the Internet, which is filled with people who have tons of free time, or he just wanted to get his ideal simulator made without forking over the cash. Either way, sorry, dick move, buddy! Now, this is where Penny Arcade comes in, or rather, the creators of it. Now, if you haven't heard of Penny Arcade, you should know that it's one of the most successful webcomics on the internet. Um, it spawned a video games exposition, PAX, a couple of video games, a children's charity, and apparently a sizable amount of income. Now, I say this because the creators, whose names I'm just going to put up in writing because I keep tripping over the second one, uh, stepped in and made the $10,000 donation themselves. With a little note on the check, of course. For Jack Thompson. Because Jack Thompson won't. So, at the end of the day, Thompson got what he want, the charity got what they want, and all of us gamers got what we want. Which is another reason to laugh at Jack Thompson on forums. But hey, credit where credit's due. Jack took his lickings like a man. He showed us that when adversity comes in the form of sudden charitable generosity, one only has to stand up straight, lift their chin, and call the FBI. No, no, seriously, he called the FBI. Uh, Seattle police, too. Uh, he told them that the two Penny Arcaders were criminally harassing him, mostly because the aforementioned Penny Arcaders were writing articles about him on their site that were just pretty much telling everybody about the whole charity fiasco. Of course, along with the word satire, uh, Thompson clearly needs a refresher course in the definition of hypocrisy, uh, because he regularly wrote harassing letters to, well, everyone he could think of. Uh, fortunately, freedom of speech still seems to be hanging around, and so the webcomic creators weren't locked up for daring to speak their minds about what was completely true. Hopefully that'll stay the case for yours truly.
But hey, I mean, I bet some of you are wondering why this episode was subtitled True Irony. Uh, see, what's ironic is that this man advocated, passionately and persistently, uh, the destructive effects of video games on one's morality or decency, uh, turning them into these violent, monstrous sociopaths. And yet, in the end, it turns out that the ones to upstage Jack in morality and decency were indeed the very embodiment of everything that this man opposed. Not only gamers, but people who had an entire career that revolved around video gaming. A career with actual satire in it, no less. Also worth mentioning is the fact that the uh, overturning of Quebec's yellow margarine ban, uh, which was spoken of in a previous video, happened on the same year that Thompson was permanently banned from the Florida legal procession. I mean, I think that's reason enough to call that year, 2008, best year ever. Okay, I, I, th I think I'm done ranting now. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, join the Artistic or Autistic Facebook page if you're interested. And if you're not, then, well, boo-hoo you. For the rest of you, take care, and just remember that there's pretty much no greater jerk move than to go back on a deal with a charity. No matter how much satire you want to use.